What's up YouTube? Sam here with Vertical Expressions and today we're coming at you with another episode of Bible Breakdown. Now in this series we try to take a chapter a day and we break it down. We try to see whatever we can get from it. We try to apply it into our daily lives. You definitely don't want to miss out. So I hope you guys are ready. Grab your Bibles and let's go. Today we're going to be breaking down chapter 6 and 7 of the book of Acts. Now me personally, if I'm being perfectly honest, this has been one of the most intense, this crazy, crazy Bible studies that I've done in a very long time. I mean, it's about to get real. I think that these chapters offer us a lot of information when it comes to building the habits of letting go and letting God. So let's jump into it. We're going to start off with verses 1 through 8. In those days when the number of disciples were increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, poor guy, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread, the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among people. I don't know about you guys, but is anybody else wondering why Stephen was performing great works when he was just anointed for food administration? Verses 9 through 15, opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the provinces of Cilicia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen, but they could not stand up against the wisdom the Spirit gave him as he spoke. Then they secretly persuaded men to say, We have heard Stephen speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produced false witnesses who testified, This fellow never stopped speaking against the holy place and against the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. All who were sitting in the Sandrin, Sanhedrin sorry, looked intently at Stephen and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. That's pretty much the end of chapter 6. I just kind of want to recap. We see that Stephen was anointed for food administration and he's kind of working miracles on the side. And then after that, we see that haters, haters start to hate and it's just life. Haters hate, players play, lovers love. Christians praise. It's gone on too long. More importantly, in this chapter, we do see that God was with Stephen. In verses 5, 10, and 15, we see that the presence of the Lord and the Holy Spirit were clearly with him. Let's go on to chapter 7. So if you just got to chapter 7, then you know that that's a whole lot of reading. Through verses 1 through 47, we see that Stephen begins to recount the history of the people of Israel, the people of God, from the inception from Abraham all the way to Solomon. Now let's go through verses 48 and 53 together. However, the Most High does not live in houses made by human hands, as the prophet says, Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all things? You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors, you always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You who have received the law that was given through angels but have not obeyed it. That's right. So Stephen was kind of just coasting through the history of the Israelites and then all of a sudden, Boom, just flips the script, he just starts attacking the priest head on. You see, he begins to rebuke them for their desires to constantly want to be in control. He begins to rebuke them for their compulsive nature, always wanting to be in control of everything. 
See, the people of God always had the habit of wanting to control everything, even God. They would build him a house and want him to dwell there like Solomon did, in which God rebuked them and said, hey, you know, I kind of created this whole world. Why would I settle for this little mediocre house that you think I deserve? They would create other gods whenever they grew impatient, as they did when they asked for God to be made for them while Moses was up in Mount Sinai. Unfortunately, they also had the really bad habit of killing prophets who prophesied things that they didn't really want to hear. Verses 54 to 60, let's go through them. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven, saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Ste Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. So real quick, I just want to recall verse 1 of chapter 7. That's when the high priest asked Stephen to defend himself against the charges that were being thrown at him. See, now Stephen could have just said, no, they're lying. But instead, he decided to take them down this really long path in recounting their history. And we see that he was full of the Holy Spirit because we know from chapter 6 that the Holy Spirit was giving him the wisdom to speak. So I really want to get into this topic of comfort zones. And I want you guys to hang on real tight because homie's about to preach. I actually think I'm getting a little bit too crazy. You see, because sometimes we just need a little bit of conflict to get us out of our comfort zones. Let's not forget that Stefan was a guy who was just anointed to make sure that food was being administered right. Next thing you know, God is using him to start a persecution that's about to spark the spread of the gospel like never before. The only thing that Stefan had going for him was that God himself had qualified him with his Holy Spirit. Everything that Stephen might have had the need of, the Holy Spirit was definitely there to supply it for him. Everything he said, everything he did, was being guided by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Now I know as humans, we tend to ask these questions. But why does Stephen have to die? I really want to point out that to humanity, Stephen died, but before God, Stephen fell asleep. Now here's a little question that might make you guys a little bit uneasy, but I want you guys to think about it. If you're living your life to fulfill your purpose in God, this, this is God's purpose, what else outside of this are you actually alive for? Stephen had already died to a lot of his selfish desires. See, the gospel until this moment, or until Stephen's death, had been stagnant and stuck in Jerusalem. But after this, if we continue on through the book of Acts, we see that the gospel begins to spread, even so that the Gentiles begin to receive the gospel just because of this huge breakout that was caused. Now I really want to know. What has God adorned you to do that you're keeping hidden just because you're stuck in a comfort zone? Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I think that you guys are a bright, bright light that this dark, dark world needs to hear. Not everybody's gonna like what you have to say, but man, it is so worth saying. Everything that God may be wanting to do in your life is so worth doing. And the truth is that it's never actually risk-free. We don't live as Christians in a risk-free world. You know, we're going to offend people and people are going to offend us. We're going to be hurt and we're going to hurt people, you know. But as long as you know and, and, and you're, you're practicing what is right and you're living faithfully and honorably before God, you're living life unashamed and unhindered, just completely free in the gospel. I, I, I really can't stress the importance of us spreading our wings and just making the most of the capacity and potential that God has given us. I don't want to be that guy, but I triple dog, candy cane on horse, a uh, puppy, kitten, ferret, dog dare you to just do one thing that's just going to move you to be a little bit closer towards what you think the purpose of God is for your life. You see that one thing is enough to start this snowball effect where you have a little snowball starts rolling, it starts rolling, and then you kind of end up with a really big snowball, but it's a really big snowball. My honest prayer is for you guys to live out your potential before God uninhibited by anything. I pray that God may help us all to let go of the little things that are kind of just dragging us down and pinning us down to this one spot when we're made for so much more. 
I mean, I don't want to be corny. But you're a falcon. Falcons have to fly. I'm even gonna do you guys a favor. I'm gonna help you take that first step towards breaking out of the comfort zone. You see, I'm gonna tell you guys to go ahead and bless that like button. <laughs> Please subscribe, share, and comment. I really wanna hear from you guys. You know, these teachings are not just for me and they're not just for you. They're kind of for everyone around us. And I wanna see us grow as a community. I wanna see us grow as a church and continue to move forward. So honestly, can't wait to see you guys on the next episode of Bible Breakdown.